Right, now, what we're going to do in this episode is look at two vehicles, Fox and Vixen, which are related. Fox, we've already heard about as its turret was used on Sabre, but we've also got Vixen here, which is the liaison vehicle, and the pair of them together make an interesting contrast. It's a pity that both didn't see service. Please remember to like, subscribe, or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. Now, the strange thing is that this vehicle didn't um, appear on the list of FVs. It came too late. It was actually built or designed as a sort of runabout like the... Um, the dear old Daimler Ferret. But because they left it a bit late, only a few were built. They were built by the Royal Ordnance Factory in Leeds and um, were not adopted by the British Army. So the fact that we've got it at all is quite something. And it's in full work in order, so it's an interesting vehicle. But the vehicle was neutralised. It never came into service. So it only existed as a prototype, but still it's an interesting vehicle. Now, it's four-wheel drive, of course, has the same engine, the Jaguar six-cylinder engine as the Fox, and the same transmission, in fact, the same wheelbase and everything as the Fox, which we will look at shortly. Now, it has a crew nominally of two. One is the driver, who sits in the front here, and the other is the commander who has his own little machine gun turret at the top. But there are also hatches on both sides for other people, not members of the crew, at least not in the sense that they're with the vehicle all the time, but people who are operating all different things. They were built for liaison work by the infantry who could carry people in the sides, but they were specifically used by people like the Royal Engineers and the Royal Artillery who had a special need of liaison vehicles and they each carried their own sort of assortment of things they needed to go into action. That's why they're just a rather a mundane looking vehicle but fully kitted out, quite an interesting one. Now the body as you can see is a broad structure designed to keep the vehicle stable on the roads. It's based on the, not just the, the Fox, but also to some extent on what were known as the big wheel ferrets, which arrived at the end of the, the ferret period, really. And um, with that sort of lineage, you'd think they were excellent. And the Vixen generally was. It was very stable. It was solid and with four wheel drive, would go pretty well anywhere. And that's the, the vehicle, it's a fairly ordinary vehicle otherwise. Again, it has the flotation screen, which was raised when the vehicle was swimming. But in the water, they were only propelled by their wheels and even steered by them by steering the front wheels. You got direction out of it. But the whole thing reduced the speed in the water to about three miles an hour if you were lucky so one hoped there wasn't any current running that's any stronger than that. But um, that's the, the whole idea of the amphibious thing. But that soon vanished. The screens were taken off the other vehicles. You'll only really find them on prototypes or old vehicles like this one. And um, it makes quite an interesting thing to talk about nowadays. It's rather like the DD tanks of the Second World War. But um, all completely forgotten now, you won't find screens or amphibious screens on any vehicle at all now. They've been done away with because they were almost useless. But they're all fitted to these early ones. So that's Vixen. This is Fox FV721, I think. It was designed by Daimler and it was really connected with the fact that during the war they'd built the Daimler Dingo and the Daimler Armoured Car 
and they were rather considered the experts on these sort of lighter type of AFV. But having built the prototypes, the project was taken away from them and given to RAF Barnbow at Leeds. So that um, finished Daimler's connection with the, um, the system. Now, one of the strangest things you'll find is that the chassis looks very much like the chassis of the later big wheel models of the Ferret, the Mark IV and the Mark V. And that's true of the whole vehicle, if you look at it closely, except for the turret. The only real difference is that the Fox, like most modern light AFVs, is designed around um, aluminium armour rather than steel. So it has somewhat thicker armour, but at the same time, it makes the vehicle a little bit sort of vulnerable in a sense. It's not as strong as steel, it never will be. But that's how it was done. That was powered by the six cylinder Jaguar engine, just the same as the CVRs were when they started off. But the Fox was never upgraded to take the diesel. And the reason is that they found out after they'd run it for a while they actually had a nasty habit of turning over. And the turret was the main reason the extra weight made it top heavy. And you showed it the slightest bit of uneven ground and it would, if it got a, away with it, try and topple upside down. And the commander had to duck in very quickly to avoid getting squashed. Now what they decided was that um, this turret made the, things slightly difficult because obviously you don't want vehicles turning upside down in the middle of a battle that would be rather embarrassing but um, in the end they, they decided to cure it the best way was to retrain the drivers so that they weren't um, likely to get tipped up and they did manage to retrain them but that isn't the answer the real answer is to try and cure whatever's causing the vehicle to tip over and they never even started on that they just retrained the drivers to drive more carefully which I suppose was half the battle but that's all now the top half is a turret made by Alvis in fact entirely of aluminium and mounting the 30 millimeter Raden cannon it's the same gun as you've seen on the scimitar with the same uh, sort of range and hitting rate, designed to fire high explosive and um, to some extent at least some armour piercing. In fact it will carry two types of armour piercing. If firing AP, discarding Sabo, it could actually take out some of the, um, even up to an MBT, it would have to get the, whole, the shot into the rear or the side, it wasn't any good aiming at the front. But it did mean that the thing had a, a nasty sting to its tail. And that gun really was excellent. One of the most accurate guns we've ever had in a vehicle. The gun's mounted forward in the turret. It has quite a high elevation and could be used to shoot at helicopters and even um, light aircraft. In fact, they say that during the Falklands War, one of these managed to bring down a, um, an Argentinian Skyhawk, which took some doing, but uh, it does allow for that, just about with a bit of elevation. Next to the main gun, you've got a coaxial 7.62 machine gun, but it takes, in this case, a crew of three, a driver, two men in the turret. One of them is the commander, but uh, just for a duration, while he's acting as loader, he has to leave his command facility behind and simply become the loader for the 30 millimeter gun. The 30 mil takes three rounds in the, um, the breech and it will fire each one singly and then they have to be replaced. Once you've started, you start the first one by winding a handle. After that, it relies on its own recoil to, to fire more rounds. It will actually fire on automatic at a rate of about 100 rounds a minute, 
but that's more than the vehicle carries. So it's not done very often if they can help it. Normally it's regarded as a single shot weapon. It's also fitted with a pair of smoke discharges on each side, which you can see, and stowage boxes all over the place. The only thing you'll find different is that this particular vehicle has the fire extinguisher mounted on the side. It wasn't part of the original fitting of the vehicle and um, carries as much as possible on the turret, but it does make it a very unstable vehicle. And in fact, they did away with it in the end. They put some of the 30 mil turrets onto FV432s and they also made the Sabre, which is a vehicle we've already seen, which was the Scorpion with its turret removed, replaced with the turret from a Fox. The vehicles themselves, they did say, were not going to be sold on the open market. I'd like to know who said it because there's quite a few of them about in private hands as it is. They did also produce a number of other turret variants, but they were only for export, and I don't think they were ever successful in any attempt at all. So they, you can more or less forget them. They did exist as prototypes, but were soon disposed of after that. And now this is all we've got, but they'll do oh, about 100k flat out, which is jolly nice if they stay the right way up. Um, four wheel drive, front wheel steering. Oh, by the way, the driver is sitting in the seat down the front there with the steering wheel virtually flat to his chest. The steering wheel is in upside down and he holds it by the top and tries to steer that way. But that's fairly common in most of these lighter vehicles. They don't carry a spare wheel. They use run flats to uh, operate normally. And so they don't need a spare wheel. But they've got the run flats to get them back to base when they need it. But that's the, the Fox for you. It was in its day hailed as one of the the most fantastic vehicles we'd ever had. It replaced not only some of the ferrets, it replaced the Saladin, which was a much harder hitting vehicle, but much bigger. And it was, this was seen as the ideal replacement for both.